-hmm. So how often do you have back pain? Probably a couple times a week. I do a lot of um, like cheer. Mm -hmm. And when I work, it's a lot of standing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so cheerleading definitely is very rigorous mm -hmm. on the human frame. It's like one of the most overlooked athletic activities that people don't pay attention to as far as the importance of how many injuries there are, what kind of conditioning is needed. It's an intense sport. Are you based? Do you fly? Uh, I'm a base. Mm -hmm. um, I get most of the impact if right. anything happens. Uh, how long have you been doing cheer for? Since I was three. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, does your back hurt while you're cheering, or is it like an afterwards effect? Mostly afterwards. Maybe like, it started two years ago. At any times that you've had back pain, do you ever have any pain that goes down your legs? Any like pain that goes down the back of your legs or pain in your hips? Um, if I'm working where it's like I'm standing for a while, mm -hmm. it goes from like my ankles because I had ankle injuries. My right one, I fractured but i cracked some of the bone off so it now cracks you had an avulsion fracture it sounds like so you, some of the bone came off mm -hmm. do you know what bone it was was it your tibia this or one. one of your ankle bones oh, i was the one i oh, saw your fibula mm -hmm. so you were in a cast had the recovery time mm -hmm. do you ever get headaches yes okay how often do you get headaches quite often Went to the doctor for them, and he said they were hormonal. So, do you get them with your period? Mm-hmm. Do you get them before, during, or after? A little bit before and during. Injuries, wrists, elbows? I have wrist injuries. Um, my right wrist is quite weak still. Um, A recent injury? No. So that was four years ago, mm -hmm. but it still bothers me a little bit because I fractured my elbow at the same time. My elbow doesn't bother me, but because I hurt my wrist and my elbow, they couldn't treat both of them at the same time. Radius or ulna? I think my radius. All right. Have you ever been to a chiropractor before? No. Okay. How do you feel about it? Mm, nervous, but excited. Okay, you said the right ankle was the one you fractured, right? Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of inversion on the left ankle, though. You can see the left toes pointing over across the body. Okay, heel strike on the right is normal. Mid stance, I toe off on the right. Everything on the right side where the fracture was looks normal. But then it's you could see the inversion happening on the left, starting with the heel strike. And then by the time we're at mid stance, the foot is already pointed. And then toe off is fine. Okay, that's good uh, as a compensation. So high left shoulder, right head tilt. So we're going to have a high mastoid process on the left as well. We'll see if that comes into play during the atlas adjustment. And then there was just a little bit of inversion that time on the right side too. On the right side. There's definitely some slight changes down at the feet, but they don't look like feet changes. They look like things that could be coming from the hip. The arches are flat. And uh, you can use some arch supports for sure. Go ahead and put your hands on your hips. Okay, good. And then I'm going to replace your fingers with my fingers, okay? okay. Yep, high left hip, high left shoulder. Nice and gentle breathing. Temperature is very symmetrical, very evenly toned from top to bottom. It's definitely warmer up here in the shoulder area. This is definitely this is where all the work is being done. All the posture work. You have pretty good posture though. You practice your posture. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna push a little bit deeper into the muscles now. I'm like I can feel a little bit of rigidness here on this right side, or excuse me, this left side of the muscles. You're right-handed, correct? Mm-hmm. It's normal to be a little bit more overdeveloped on the opposite side of your dominance. Okay, 
the muscles on this side are just a little bit more tuned up than the muscles on this side. Can you feel a difference there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I push here versus if I push here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's like skin irritation forming on this left side here from me pushing it. This does not like me pushing into it right here. All right, I'm going to check out your SI joints. I'm going to palpate your SI joints. Okay, do you have any tenderness, discomfort here? It's like the bottom of where you're pushing. Down here? Yeah. Tender on the left. How about on this right side? Is that one tender? No. So tenderness in the lower left SI joint. What about upper left versus upper right? Mm -hmm. Nope, that's good. It's good range of motion. This is very playful. I don't feel any stuckness. Good. This mid thoracic spine here, even though you don't have any pain here, you have this muscle here that's tense. These blood vessels are not happy that I was pushing into it. Keeping your feet flat on the ground, you want to move your knees apart from each other. Good. Now close. Good. Open. Close. Okay. Good movement on the right, not as much on the left. Okay. So. Definitely some left SI joint stuff here to look at. Left thoracic spine and the shoulder blade scapular area. But posturally, this looks really good. You don't have any curvatures to the left or right. There's no herniated discs here, no pinched nerves, no red flags. It's all pretty straightforward mechanical stuff. Okay, you're gonna bring your chin to your chest. Good, up, chin. Chin. Any tenderness here? Mm, a little more than the other side, but not like. Mm -hmm. So, slight increased tenderness right atlas. So, you're gonna feel my fingertips on the back of your hamstrings like this. I'm gonna slide up to the glute fold. We're lower on the right side than the left, which means this right hip has possibly gone posterior or inferior like that. The left possible anterior or superior. Looking from the top here, the right side is coming out just a little bit more and the left side is flat, which means the left side would probably be an IN or the right side EX. So possibly PIEX on the right or ASIN on the left. This is where the tenderness is. This is where you have pain. Your head relaxed, good flexibility, almost palming the floor there. Okay, looking for any curvatures in the spine, no deviations to the left or right, no rib humping. Go ahead and stand back up. We'll observe postural sway here. Just very small micro movements in your posture. Feel that? You like wobble a little bit to the side. Go ahead and close your eyes. It exacerbates it. Good. Yeah, you really are just mostly forward and backwards. A slight unsteadiness forward and backwards with a little bit of a disposition this way. The right leg is short than the left, but very minimally and normal too. I'm going to bend your knees now. Okay, try not to help me. Let me do the work. Let me do it. Relax, good. Right short crosses over. Okay. Okay, pushing here, do you have any pain, discomfort, tension here? No. Any pain, discomfort, tension here? No. Any pain, discomfort, tension here? A little bit. A little bit. Here's where that tenderness was, lower SI joint, still tender here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Good, down. Good, left hip up. Good, down. Tender. Is this terrible or what? Well. <laughs> Do you have high pain tolerance? Mm, certain areas. This does not feel good, Kenzie. This feels like it would hurt. <laughs> what, this side tender? Yeah. Which side more?
Take a nice gentle breathing, Kenzie. I'm just going to do a little stretch here. Good, I'm gonna follow your breath like this. Good, at the end of your breath, then we push like that, okay? okay? It's already starting to crack. That means we're in the right place. It also means that you're relaxed. So we'll give this one a little bit more push this time. Same thing, deep breath in and out. Same thing, one at the top here, following your breath, and then we're pushing it like that. Let's try that same thing again, same breath, deep breath in, and out. Good. Okay, let's try that deep breath in, far as you can go. Good, let your shoulders relax as you breathe out. Let it all go. I'm gonna stretch your shoulder like this in that direction. I'm gonna bring your hips down like this, like and that, and then I crack it. Yep. Okay, good. Shoulders, hips, let it all go. Take a deep breath in and out. Good, we're gonna bring this up. Hold on, there's more. Lay your back. Clunky. Okay, I'm gonna bring the hip down. There's more, hold on. Okay, another deep breath in through your nose and out. Go over and bring it down. Good, shoulders relax. Okay, there's one more, hold on. Good, lay your back. It was like there's one more. <laughs> so turn your head to the right. Good. Back to center. Now to the left. Center. Okay, so your left leg is short, but then when you turn to the left, it becomes even with the right. Okay, so that's telling me that that motion created balance in your spine. And so all of the rotation in the spine, 80% of the rotation in the spine comes from the upper cervical spine. So we're going to look at your upper cervical on the right, which is what was tender earlier during the exam. Okay, let's do this now. Bring your right ear down to your shoulder. Okay, right ear, right lateral flexion made it worse. Go back to center, meaning your left leg got shorter. So the difference between the two became more, greater. Now bring your left ear down to your shoulder. Good, now that equalized your leg, balancing your spine. Go back to center. So we'll look at left lower cervical, upper right. Okay, nice gentle breathing. Okay, I'm just gonna do this neck traction. And you can just sink into your breath.
So we're gonna do this adjustment on the right side. I'm gonna bring your head over to like right about there. I'm gonna follow your breath, and as you breathe out, let your head drop, let it relax, let your shoulders relax. Good, as you breathe out, I'm just gonna follow this, and then we push like that, okay? Okay. Okay, let this relax, let your head drop, and there you go, just like that, Kenzie. Okay, so, nice gentle breathing, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Good, let it all go, let it sink in here, good, let it drop, let your head drop, good. Alrighty then. Okay, now we're gonna do the left side. Nice and gentle, I'm gonna bring your head over to the side like this and let it drop. Okay, I'm gonna test this left side, we're gonna feel where it needs to be adjusted. So like, seven, six, five, four, Yep, a little bit in the upper middle. Three, four, five, right here. A little tender right there? Mm-hmm. Here, good. Okay, so this is gonna be gentle. Okay, follow your breath and then push like that. Okay. Let your head relax, shoulder relax. Good, just kind of sink into the table. Let your head drop, shoulders drop. Good, let this go. Good. Okay, I'm gonna start on the left side here. Yes. You're right up there? So cold? No. Did you see it? Sh sh yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, they do that sometimes. It does that sometimes? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, a little pull like this in this direction, okay? Good. All right, now push your knees apart. Push your knees apart. Push, 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 Relax. Okay, now you're gonna squeeze again. Squeeze. Hard as you can. Squeeze. Why did it crack like that? That was your pubic bone. So your pubic symphysis is the front of your pelvis. Okay. I'm so small. Mm -hmm. Organ manipulation, okay? So you keep your hands here. So the first one we do is find the ileocecal valve. We find this by finding first the umbilical, the belly button right here, and then your ASIS, the front hip bone. Okay, you can do this at home too. Connect these two points. This is the window between the large and the small intestine. Okay, deep breaths. Take some deep breaths. There you go. Good. Do you ever do any belly breathing? Okay, so ready? What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a deep breath into your belly. Like, so push your belly out. Good. Now, now relax. Okay, now push your belly out as you breathe in. Oh, as I breathe in? Yeah. Yes, and out. Good, okay, this is a diaphragmatic breath. Now, deep breath into your belly. Fill your belly up, push against my hand. Good, and then when you breathe out, you're gonna suck in towards your spine. Oh, out? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, uh -huh, yeah. Breathe into your belly. Good, now out towards your spine. Good, into your belly. Out to your spine. Well, let's do this, I'm gonna do the pyloric sphincter. This is where the stomach empties into the small intestine. Okay. So we just go two inches above the belly button. So you did not have lunch. No. But you had breakfast, because it's all down here. So it's all like coming around the corner here. Okay, I'm gonna do a diaphragm manipulation. Good. How's the pressure here on the diaphragm, okay? Nope.
Not today. I'm going to pull your arm so make sure hips are in there. And this cracking there. Okay, this is a full spine adjustment, okay? okay. Your hips are held in place. I'm going to wrap this towel to, around your neck to help with your cervical spine, okay? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, we're going to pull like this. Good, this helps support your neck. I'm going to follow your breath. And then as you breathe out, just like the other adjustments, we're going to pull in this direction at the end. We're going to pull like that, okay? Okay. Okay, nice gentle breathing. In through your nose and out. Good. That was kind of toe curling. Good. Okay, that was pretty good. Did you feel it all the way down? Did you feel it in your low back? Tumbling. <laughs> like, you ever seen the girls that are like, they do like Flip back all the flips? flips. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like I should do. Yes. Can we, yeah. Just, yeah. So you, so you feel like you want to do flips? Yep. That's a great response. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe that. That's pretty really? much the best description you can get. together like this. I really hold them up. Okay, hold them together. Don't let me pull it apart. Hold, hold. Hold. Okay, now turn it over like this. Hold. Hold. Okay, relax that arm. Good. Let this relax. Good. Now your stomach gurgles. Push. Hard as you can. Push. What? <laughs> Not turn it over. Hold. Better. Okay, let's relax. Standard? No. Let me see your pulse here. So let this relax. All right, so this is a pulse that's taken from traditional Chinese medicine and also Ayurvedic medicine, which is um, the medicine of India, the continent of India. Now, in Western medicine, we use the pulse to determine the condition of how the heart is moving blood. So we look at the rate, the rhythm, the contour, and the amplitude. Now in Eastern pulse diagnosis techniques, there are actually three pulse points, not one. And each pulse point uh, relates to a different organ and meridian system. And there's a superficial, and then there's a deep. Now, besides the organs, there's also a constitution reader. And so in exercise sciences, these are called ectomorph, endomorph, and mesomorph. 
That's a, this is a, that's the Western way to look at the different body types. It's like your character. Uh, in the ancient medicines and the traditional medicines, uh, they look at those characteristic types and they have different names. And in Ayurvedic medicine, they're called Vata, Pitta, and Kapha. Vata is like the, the skinny people, just hard to gain weight, full of air. Vata is made up of air and ether. It's the ectomorph. And then there's the pitta. The pitta is made up of fire and water. Pitta people are, it's easy for them to gain muscle. It's also easy them for them to lose muscle um, physically. You have a lot of, you have some fire here. You have a nice pitta pulse. But I think that you're primarily kapha. Cause I see. So you ha you do have a kapha pulse. Kapha people are, they're very like nurturing. Like you get a lot of nurses who are kapha. A lot of animal lovers. Are you an animal lover? Yeah. You have pets? Yeah. How many? Mm, a cat, a dog, a bearded dragon, and chickens. And fish. What's your bearded dragon's name? Lizzie. Okay. I adopt. Anything else? Any other animals? Mm -mm. I had horses and other dogs. Okay. So do you ride? Yes. Cool. Again with a strong fire pulse on this side as well. The fire pulse like to see a lot of like Always moving. They love to like tear things down, start from the beginning. For Kafa people, it's important not to get stuck in a rut. You have to try new things always. You have to be, you have to be consistently spontaneous. What do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. I have a lot of different things. My number one choice was army. <laughs> and then owning a bakery. Mm. Yeah. Army is pitta. For sure. So I'm feeling that pitta pulse, but then that kapha comes right back in when you're culinary. Ancient Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine, they took these the body types that was just the body but there was also an emotional type and an intellectual type that goes with that constitution and so like that's why you see the similarities in the professions the similarities in relationships the similarities in interests and hobbies pretty cool right The sound acts like a vehicle. And so as long as you're listening to the sound, then that means you're present in the moment. Good. Just like, you're here right now. Relax, there's one more, hold on. Still right now.